to get a video of this. <laughs> Sent to my friend in Indiana. <laughs> Uh, thanks for coming out for our very last part of the day. Uh, I'm Can't even mention quite how much work the Society of Women Engineers put into uh, putting this together. They've been uh, working, building these things, uh, and getting dirty, setting them up for you, tearing them down. So please, let's give Society of Women Engineers a big round of applause. Thank you. Okay, how many of you have seen fire before? I like Anyone? Show of hands? Peter? I like it. Yeah. So if you've seen a fire before, outside of a fireplace or outside of some controlled environment, what you probably know is it's an incredibly dangerous and incredibly damaging force. Fire accounts for about 3,000 fatalities every year. That's 3,000 of our neighbors, our friends, and our families who do not survive as a result of fire. 11 to $15 billion worth of property damage every year as a result of fire. This is important. This is a big deal. So there's two things that we want you to get out of this. First of all, a little more understanding of fire and some of the safety concerns that you should have. Listening for those smoke detectors. The importance of installing sprinklers in your home. How many of you have smoke detectors in your home? Hopefully everyone raises your hand. How many of you have checked the battery in your smoke detector within the last six months? All right. Those of you who raise your hand. You will find out very quickly how rapidly a smoke detector can warn you that it's time to get out of the house. You hear that smoke detector, it's not time for you to go figure out where that fire is. It's time for you to get out, get your family, to get out. Okay. How many of you have sprinklers in your home? You don't have a sprinkler system in their home? Okay. Some of you live in apartments, dorms. You probably have one. Very rarely are they installed in homes. The other thing that you'll see here when we compare Indiana to Illinois is the importance, the lack of damage, the rapid response, how quickly you could get back to living your normal life if you have a sprinkler system in your home. Okay? There are two groups of people that we need to thank for making our lives safer. One of them is the fire department we have right here. Let's give Urbana Fire Department one last round of applause. Woo! These gentlemen have done a great job. They are also your neighbors, your friends, and your family who work either in career or volunteer fire departments throughout the state. These are the people that you know. They're, they have gone through extraordinary amounts of training and do an excellent job to protect us and make us safe. One other group of occupational, uh, one other occupation that uh, helps us stay safe from fire. Anyone have any idea who that is? Okay, give you a quick hint. What are we doing here today? Why are you all here? To so see stuff burn. Engineers, Science. right? Everyone heard of a fire protection engineer? No. No, but that Fire protection good. engineers understand combustion. They understand the physics and the chemistry of fire. They understand all that science of fire. Then they can derive engineering controls and systems in order to make your life safer. Those sprinkler systems, those smoke detectors that are developed by engineers, they continue to be improved by engineers, and they're now being installed and designed into buildings. Those are just two small examples of what fire protection engineers do. So for those of you who are thinking about going into engineering as your future, consider fire protection engineering. Not only do you get to learn a lot of science, you get to apply the science and the math, you get to do it in a way that's going to help society, help our firefighters to do their job more effectively. It's a great profession to look into. We're very fortunate here in Illinois that we have a group of young engineers, graduate and undergraduate alike, who are studying the science and the chemistry of fire. Many of them are also volunteer firefighters. And uh, the young man who is going to come up here and narrate this fire for you, Jack Regan. He is a sophomore in civil engineering here. He's also a volunteer firefighter in Edge Scott Fire Department. So I'd like to invite him to come up here, and he'll work, uh, talk you through this fire. So let's welcome Jack. Yay, Jack. Hi everyone. So, like you said, we got two dorm rooms, and they're meant to simulate your typical college dorm room, messy. Um, the Illinois one, the big difference is the Illinois one has, is equipped with a life-saving sprinkler system. Both rooms also have smoke detectors, just so you can see the similarity between the two rooms in that way. So, as you can see, Dan just um, ignited that fire over there, and almost immediately the smoke detector went off. Um, the lesson to take away from that is, if you hear a smoke detector, get out of the building. It's not, it's not.
not meant for you to go looking around for a fire extinguisher, hunting it with a fire extinguisher. Um, the smoke detector goes off and you want to get out. So that started the uh, first phase of the fire cycle, um, which is the ignition. And after ignition, it rapidly progresses into the growth phase. Um, Uh, in the growth phase, what's going to happen is that fire plume is going to get bigger. It's going to start consuming more and more material. So you can see that fire go. started oh, in no, a yeah. uh, trash bin. It was just some newspaper, <laughs> uh, some Class A combustibles, oh, and it's going to go straight into that chair. And uh, the thing about uh, modern, the contents of a modern room are that whereas 30 years ago you would have a lot of natural fibers, like uh, a lot of cotton, wood. <laughs> Now almost everything is synthetic. You got a lot of polyurethane um, and oil-based uh, polymers that uh, it's basically solid gasoline. It burns a lot hotter. It burns a lot faster. So what we're going to be seeing pretty soon here with all this black smoke pouring out is a phenomenon known as uh, flashover. So what flashover is is a pr uh, the transition between the fully developed or the uh, growth phase and the fully developed phase. And what that is, is the, all those hot gases right up at the ceiling, they're going to start radiating down and uh, heating up that carpet to its ignition temperature. And when that happens, the, uh, the hot temperatures which are at the ceiling, they invert and go to the floor. So it's actually hotter at the floor than it is at the ceiling. Um, no one can survive a flashover, not even a firefighter in turnout gear, and especially not a civilian uh, victim who's not wearing any sort of protective equipment. You can see those black gases that are coming out of there. This flashover, you can see the carpet took off of. Those black gas, there's some pretty nasty stuff in those gases. There's a lot of hydrogen cyanide, carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide, which out here in this open environment isn't that bad, but in a building it's deadly. It's not the uh, heat that kills you, it's the gases. That led us to the final stage of the fire, which is decay. Without a fire department intervention, the fire will eventually heat all its fuel and die on its own, but these guys did a good job.